Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. I'm Benita Levine. Let's go back to one of our top stories and Donald Trump says Recep Tayyip Erdogan has told him he will eradicate whatever is left of ISIS in Syria. In a tweet late on Sunday, the US leader said his Turkish counterpart is a man who can do it. Plus, Turkey is right next door. The US leader shocked the world and his own defense officials when he announced last week that he's withdrawing his troops from the country because he says the militant group ISIS has been defeated. The US military says the order to withdraw has been signed. No further details were given. The Turkish presidency said the two leaders had agreed in a phone call to prevent a power vacuum in Syria after the US forces withdraw. Well, for the latest on the story, we're joined in studio by Dr. Chai Eitan Cohen Yanorochak, a Turkey analyst from the Moshe Dayan Center. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us. Now, in the latest developments, as we've been reporting, we're hearing Donald Trump quoting Erdogan saying that he is going to sort out and eradicate ISIS. Mm -hmm. What do you make of all of this? Well, uh, I th as far as I understand, Mr. Erdogan's dreams came true because for maybe for maybe for two years he's insisting that the Turkish armed forces would do this job instead of the P, the Kurdish PYD and Mr. Erdogan again made it very clear to um, the American administration that he wants to get rid of not only ISIS but the real name of the game is the PYD from the Turkish point of view the PYD uh, is constituting a national security threat against Turkey so this will give a golden opportunity for the Turkish administration to get rid of this uh, Kurdish uh, existence uh, throughout the border and in case that they are going to launch such an operation we may expect to see and uh, new demographical changes uh, in the northern part of Syria, which means that Turkey will relocate uh, the Syrian refugees who are just now taking shelter inside Turkey. They will be sent to northern Syria so that the Kurds in the northern Syrian cantons will turn into a minority in their own region, which basically will change the names of the, the, the rules of the game completely and uh, will basically provide a solution, a long-run solution for the Turkish security concerns. So we may expect in um, in very near future to see an extraterritorial uh, military uh, operation against uh, the PYD and later than that we may see another additional uh, military operation against uh, ISIS just to satisfy uh, the American administration. Talking about the American administration, help us understand this trust that seems to exist now between Trump and Erdogan, that he is referring to him and somehow it seems that Erdogan was more in the loop about this controversial withdrawal of US troops than other leaders were. Well, I don't think that there is a, a relation of trust between the two leaders. Just I would like to remind you that approximately uh, two uh, months ago, both leaders engaged in a very uh, harsh rhetoric uh, in, in the social media and that's why the Turkish economy uh, basically suffered from uh, a very harsh uh, devaluation. But uh, let, me, uh, let me get back to your question. Uh, the name of the game here is Russia and in my opinion the Saudi journalist Khashoggi. Uh, the thing is uh, United States see the rapprochement between uh, the uh, between Russians and the uh, and the Turkish administration. The Turks are willing to buy S-400 missile systems, and from a NATO point of view, uh, this is an this is an unacceptable um, act. So U.S. Uh, just, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a week and a half ago, they passed a bill uh, in the Congress that letting the U.S. administration to sell such missiles uh, to to Turkey, Patriot missile systems to Turkey, so that the Turks will not going to buy uh, such systems from the uh, Russians. And uh, another important issue is Mohammed bin Salman. And uh, in this case, as far as I understand, of course, there is nothing, no evidence in my hand, but from my reading this whole picture, I may say that maybe with this kind of a, um, withdrawal of the U.S. troops from the region, maybe Turkey, uh, maybe U.S. is willing to lower the pressure that is that it is um, coming from the Turkish side on Mohammed bin Salman and on U.S. interests, and, and I guess that's uh, that's how uh, United States is trying to 
um, let me say, main defenses uh, with the Turkish administration. Another important issue, of course, uh, the religious cleric Fethullah Gülen. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're aware of it. Uh, United in the United States, uh, the FBI is. Uh, committing some arrests and uh, taking people to custody in order to, again, to satisfy the Turkish administration. So, uh, as far as I understand, the U.S. administration is doing its best in order to, um, um, how should I say, the mending relationship with the Ankara administration. And so far, uh, from the Turkish point of view, it's going great. Certainly a lot of interesting players in this yeah. latest development. I want to bring you back to Israel right now and sure. the war of words yeah. that is erupting and seems to be intensifying between Benjamin Netanyahu mm -hmm. and Recep Tayyip Erdogan. At some point it's actually quite ugly and almost cringeworthy to look at. <laughs> How did this all happen? Well, uh, it didn't start yesterday, but uh, we must admit that uh, the two leaders have turned uh, this issue into a personal one. And uh, they, they are basically rejecting uh, to, normalize, uh, uh, to normalize the relations. Uh, it's, we are not talking about the genuine normalization, even if the, co the two countries declared such a normalization in 2016. The thing is, uh, this kind of uh, confrontation with the Jewish state is uh, basically paying to the hands of President Erdogan in, at the ballot box, and he's, uh, he experienced that uh, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the past, that uh, whenever he engaged in such a, a rhetorical confrontation with the Israeli leader, he got um, basically rewarded at the ballot box. So since in Turkey in, the March, uh, in March, we are going to have the municipal elections. So it's not an, uh, for me, it's not a surprise, but I was expecting such a confrontation maybe in February or maybe in the beginning of March, not in December, but it happened. But of course, we don't know. Maybe it's also related to the U.S. withdrawal from Syria. Maybe Mr. Erdogan uh, feels himself a lot stronger, and maybe he's trying to uh, emphasize that Israel is weaker now in the region because of this U.S. withdrawal. Thank you so much. That's Thank Dr. Khay Eitan Cohen Yanorotchak, a Turkey analyst from the Moshe Dayan Center.